All right, welcome back, friends. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a review on a 2017 1025R. This is the main equipment that I use for uh, my business, the Little Green Tractor. Um, I bought this in 2019. I think the entire package with the tractor and the loader and the 60D belly mower, all of that came to like 16.6. I know that blows your mind because that was in 2019, I think March of 2019. And now prices are so much more expensive. Tractors are way more expensive. And um, anyway, I think I just got in at the right time. I did order a holdover model, which means that uh, there were some brand new tractors, hence why this is a 2017, that did not sell in 2017 or 2018. And therefore we're brand new, but we're still on the lot and we're discounted at a price. So I got a brand new tractor with the new style curved boom loader. And um, I got it for, I don't know, it was probably like 15 to 20% off um, just because it was two model years older, uh, but literally no difference in the 2019 models. So anyway, obviously it's 2022 now. And so this may be a little bit dated, but for the most part, these tractors are identical. Um, there are some very minor differences. Um, so what you're going to see in this review is going to be likely very similar to um, newer model tractors because there's really not much difference. But 16.6 is mind blowing to me. And I thought I just got a really, really good deal um, on this tractor compared to what I'm seeing now. So I don't mean to be uh, uh, braggadocious about that or anything. It's just the, the interest, uh, interesting things about, you know, how our economy works and um, supply and demand and supply chain and all those types of factors that are influencing our market today. So anyway, let's, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper. All right. So first off that I am in my garage because this is all I have. I don't have a big shop. I just have a two car, two stall garage. So, um, many of you also have something similar to this. You don't have a big shop. You don't have a lift. You don't have um, some of those conveniences. Some of you do, which is awesome. I hope to be there someday too. Um, but just right now at uh, at my age and where I'm at with my career, uh, I just don't have those luxuries yet. So, uh, but at any rate, this is just happening in my garage. That's why you see that I don't have a bucket on. Um, I took it off just to give myself some extra space, but there's nothing wrong with a bucket. It's just worn, just typical old worn bucket. Um, nothing wrong with it there. So really not much to highlight. Um, so I didn't see it was necessary for this video, but uh, let's start off with the number of hours that I have on this beast. So it's got 360.3 hours. Um, I would say these are pretty hard hours because I use this commercially for business. I don't use a lot of it for um, personal, just basically mowing my lawn mainly. But um, first thing I wanted to do for this review is, since we're already at this point, is talk about this gauge. It's not running, but it's saying that it's at 1500 RPMs. The reason for that is this little, um, those little stoppers on each side, this one broke off and it's actually dangling right there, right in the corner of the uh, digital screen. I don't know how that broke, but that's a little bit annoying. Um, I'm not, let me know in the comments if any of you have had the same problem or if you've fixed it at all. It's not a big deal because I'm pretty, you know, I know where the RPMs are just by sound now, just by being on this so often. But what this does is when you turn the key, the gauge calibrates, I'll show you. And it's supposed to go from that little stopper to the stopper. So when one of them's broke, it doesn't calibrate correctly every time. So that's a little bit kind of annoying, but it's not that big of a deal, but just something that I noticed. So the last time I did this same video, I think was at the 200 hour mark. Um, a lot of the things that happened in that video, I haven't happened again. So that was, you know, about 160 hours ago and there hasn't really been too many problems with it. I've really been happy with everything on this machine. Any problem that has happened has, you know, been really minor. Um, nothing major, just all kind of little things, but um we saw this in the last video i never did fix this this is just cosmetic but it's got you know marks in the front brush guard there and i don't know i never really fixed it i thought it gives my tractor a little bit of character i don't know let me know what you guys think I'd, maybe i'll fix it at some point but i have paint i got a lot of john deere paint um 
but I don't know. I just left it. I think it's kind of cool. It's it's a nice little kind of a mark of craftsmanship type of thing. But I, even though I'm not making anything, it just just kind of neat to see that. But maybe I'll paint it. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. But anyway, just basic cosmetic scuffs from trees and running into things. Um, we got black soot, and that's from the exhaust because it comes out right there. Any U1025 owners probably have the same thing. Um, you can scrub that off and stuff. That's no big deal. Uh, this little um, hydraulic line guard. There was a there was a strap right here, and I ended up breaking it. I think I actually got a stick up in here or something, and it uh, it broke it and kind of stretched it. So I may actually cut the rest of that off and get a new one because I did end up taking a um, zip tie. And then I zip tied this middle, but it came off again. So, and this right here is the uh, front diverter. I have a Artillion diverter, and it you know it works really good. I've never had any problems with that. I had some at first with the uh, with the lever um, that controls it, but that was a wiring issue. That it was my fault because it didn't wire it very well. So I soldered the lines, and uh, I've had no issues with it since. But. Anyway, uh, just cosmetic issues up front, nothing major, so really nothing to report here uh, with the loader or anything like that, so we'll keep moving around. I will report at 360 hours that, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff on forums that people are having um, leaking front axle seals, and a lot of people are putting the vented um, front axle cap. I, I don't have that. Mine's still the same cap. It's just original. Uh, the cap is on this side, actually. But um, it's wet because of the rain. I just brought it in from outside. It's just a gross day. I mean, look at the tires. They're all full of mud, and it's just nasty day here. So, um, But when this is dry, there is no leak at any of the seals, and I've had plenty of heavy loads up front, and I've had no problems with it. So I don't know if that's just more common on certain model years or what, but... Haven't had any issues though, so that's in good shape. Okay, one problem I did have, um, my loader mast here came loose. Um, that's fairly common. You just have to retorque these. I don't remember what the torque is, but maybe I'll try to put something up here. But um, yeah, I just retorqued these. This is actually what came loose, but while I was at it, I also just retorqued. There's three on this side and three on the other, so I retorqued all of those. But that's pretty minor. Um, you will notice it though, you know, as you're operating the loader that this just seems loose. Um, also, if you take the loader off and you're trying to put it back on, sometimes this doesn't, you know, line up right within that joint very well. And that's just because the, the, the loader mast is off a little bit, so. But that's an easy fix. You just torque those back up to spec. Um, a lot of stickers have rubbed off over the past few years. This has a mark right here, and actually on the other side, this entire sticker is missing. I bought another one, but I just haven't put it back on yet. Um, cosmetically up here, same kind of thing. Stickers uh, for the light control, that has peeled off about half of it. And um, I don't know, these are like painted on, but you can't really see the directional light there anymore. You really can't see the PTO symbol um, on the PTO switch anymore and then you know some of the stickers are just getting a little bit more worn but otherwise you know that's again more cosmetic nothing uh, functional or uh, mechanical virtually nothing wrong over here I did have to tighten up both sides of the lights um, once in a while which is really easy just tighten up that bolt I think it's um, half inch or 13 millimeter so that was really, you know, simple. But otherwise, literally nothing, nothing wrong with this entire area. Um, in my last video, I, on my last um, review video at 200 hours, I uh, mentioned that I broke these lights off, hitting a tree. Um, but those are relatively easy to put back on. You do have to fish the wires through the, the rops and down there and plug them back in. But that's that's pretty simple. But that happened before, and I haven't haven't had that happen again. So. I will mention the tires. I don't have any weights on them. Uh, I also have not filled them with rim guard, otherwise beet juice. 
Uh, they do offer that locally here in Bismarck, but I, I choose not to do it just because, I don't know, I find myself taking the tires on and off quite frequently because I do tree jobs and they have a lot of those honey locusts here and I'll end up getting flat tires. And so, I don't know, I, just a personal, personal preference. Um, I just haven't used them. I haven't really felt the need to put any weight, extra weight on. Usually I have good enough ballast. I have other types of ballast as well, but... Um, anyway, the tires have been holding up, you know, pretty well. I haven't done a lot of locust, honey, honey locust tree jobs, so <laughs> learn my lesson once. That's all, all it takes. But um, anyway, other, other than that, nothing wrong with the tires. Just flats once in a while, but um, that's that's pretty minor. I haven't had a lot of them lately. And then in the back here, I'll briefly talk about this uh, King Cutter XB tiller. I bought this brand new um, shortly after I bought the tractor and. March of uh, 2019, but I've beaten the living heck out of this thing and um, I don't know I've hit rocks I've hit roots and I've had the whole thing just pop up and fall back down numerous times um, I don't know how many hours this is you know this has on it, but this is probably one of my most used implements uh, By far. I really like it. I've had zero issues with it um, I do need to maintenance it. I do need to put oil, so I'm going to change the oil here soon. And um, you can see here that the seal is leaking a little bit. Um, not really enough for me to be concerned. It's not dripping, it's just wet, um, which isn't really that surprising. This one is a little bit worse, so I may need to fix that. But, um, you know, it does... It does probably leak a little bit and I'm always working in the dust because last summer was so dusty so hence you can kind of see a lot of dirt built up there but so I, I probably should replace that seal and both of them really but um, I do damage this thing a little bit and that's mainly from my grapple so you can see this plate is all beat up and that's because I grab a hold of this thing with my grapple um, to lift it out of the trailer or just to move it around because I hate fumbling with the chain and you know, that's just easier if you got a grapple Just grab a hold of stuff and move it um, This is this is equipment. So I, I'm really not too worried about beating it up. It, it is not really supposed to look shiny to me, but um, So anyway, that's why you see that So it you know, it's taken some abuse um, These pins so one of the largest complaints with this King Cutter XB or these uh, subcompact series attachments is that they don't have, they're not quick hitch compatible. You can make them quick hitch compatible by getting longer pins and those are, it's a really relatively easy fix. You can kind of see that this is already starting to bend. So usually what I do is I just replace these annually, if not um, semi-annually or biannually. I don't know which one, twice a year, whatever that means. And uh, that's usually no problem. but. I actually might make another bracket and just actually make this quick hitch compatible instead of replacing those pins every year. Because I tell you what, pins aren't getting any cheaper and neither are the bushings. So bushings you can salvage because they have a pin that goes through the middle and you can just punch those out and just replace the pin and then put the bushing back in. So that's no big deal. But uh, over the last couple of years I have seen that they've gotten more and more expensive. Same thing on this side, this one also bends. Um, here, let's take a look under here. Uh, tines, I mean, this is beat up. I gotta cut out all of this, I don't know, material that's wrapped up in here. I got twine and, you know, whatever else. But, you know, these tines are, are good. None of them are cracked or anything yet. Um, obviously, they're beat up from rocks and the paint is missing and stuff, but um, everything is good under here. Just looks, looks a little beat up, but it's also working in the ground a lot, so um, nothing to report there. It's been a really good implement. I don't know if you can see this. The sticker is still on here. I bought this in 20, uh, 2019. This says fifteen ninety nine ninety nine, so sixteen hundred. That's how much I paid for this new. I don't even know how much they are now, but I'm sure they're more expensive than that. But uh, well worth the investment for sixteen hundred, I think. Again, cosmetically beat up. Um, I know a lot of you are probably saying, "Oh, you're really hard on your equipment and stuff," but yeah, I, I guess I use it commercially. I don't. I take care of it. Uh, it just looks a little beat up, but that's to me that's what equipment is for. So, but I guess everyone has their own their own preferences. 
Um, hey, let me talk about this uh, quick hitch. This is Harbor Freight quick hitch. I was a little skeptical about buying this at first. And uh, that's because it was only like a hundred bucks. And I thought, boy, this thing isn't gonna last. It's not gonna be any good. And um, this bracket right here, if you, have a, if you have a quick hitch, Harbor Freight one, this bracket actually comes all the way down. But um, I had to cut some of this away because my box blade is a clevis hitch. And um, I needed to make room right here so that the clevis could fit in there and uh, it would work. And it, I thought this for sure would bend or break over time, but it hasn't at all. So I'm super happy with this purchase. I spent like a hundred bucks on this quick hitch. I see people buying these iMatch ones and spending three, four hundred bucks on a quick hitch. And I, I just think that's, that's, that's ludicrous. I don't know why people would do that. If they can get one for a hundred bucks, that works just fine. So anyway, that's just my own opinion. I did have to get um, a different hook up on top because the hook that it comes with really isn't quick hitch compatible or the, the depth isn't right. So I just bought one of those off of Amazon for, I don't know, like 30 bucks or something like that. So all together, maybe 130, 140 bucks to make this thing work. And it's been perfect. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. I don't know if I mentioned this on my last uh, 200 hour review, but I did break one of these um, buckles before. Actually, let's see, right here at the, so this goes all the way through. And this actually broke like inside of there. It just sheared straight off. So um, I bought another one from John Deere and these are made out of what I think is aluminum. At least it seems like aluminum to me. It's very, very light and that broke. I can't remember how much it was. It really wasn't that bad, but to replace it is very simple. So um, everything else is good. My uh, PTO shields always come off They're I don't know, they always break. Um, I have some other implements that are like this too. My snow blower one is like that. So anyway, I got tired of just trying to fix it and I'm never back here. I mean, this thing does spin and obviously those shields are on there for safety, but it comes with those little chains and I'll even hook the little chain up to something, you know, up here so that it doesn't spin, but then the chain breaks or that, and then the whole thing just spins anyway. So I don't know. I just took the whole thing off and quit bothering with it. Um, I don't know. That seems to make it a little bit easier. I never had any problems with it afterwards. You just got to keep this uh, greased up and clean it once in a while. And yeah, there's, there's not much to it. But anyway, that's that, that plastic thing never, never really worked for me. Also something embarrassing. So this cover goes up and down. Ugh, it's stuck. I didn't know that that moved until like last summer. I've owned this thing for like you know, two years or whatever. And I didn't know that that thing actually moved up and down. So it was all the way down and I had one heck of a time trying to, you know, get the PTO um, unhooked from the, from the shaft and stuff. And then I realized that this thing moves up and down and it gives you way more room. So if you don't know that, uh, just, <laughs> just do that. Ask me how I know. Um, it makes life way easier. I can't believe I didn't know that for such a long time. What a, what a simple thing that, you know, you just don't know what you don't know. Um, everything over here has been good also. Um, had this three-point lever, very common problem. This loosens up, that happened at like 50 hours or something like that. I have another video on that too, but real simple fix. They have those friction washers. I never did replace those. I just tightened up the bolt and left it. And I haven't had a problem since, so I don't really see the need to replace those friction washers. I'm sure they're there for a reason, but if they broke within 50 hours, why would I put another one in just so it breaks in another 50 hours? I don't know. So I just didn't even replace it. But um, again, this, this little device here is kind of chintzy. You know, this is a three point. You can set that so your three point only goes down so far. I've used it a couple times, but it's kind of flimsy and I don't know. I just don't really use it much, but I just a note there. Again, the light I had to tighten that back up once. Um, I have had a problem with this whole joystick coming loose, so it will turn and will actually like un unscrew. So the way you fix that is you just tighten up this nut down here. Sorry for the glare, everything's so wet and, and the lights and stuff. But anyway, that nut right there, you just tighten that up real good and 
it's no big deal, but I've had no problems with this other than it coming loose. So, but again, easy fix, just tighten it back up. I've kind of noticed uh, a theme here with loose bolts. I think I saw someone from another video say that too. So if you get a 1025R, just go around and torque everything and try to tighten things up. Don't over tighten them because you'll break stuff too, but um, at any rate, there's a theme here with some bolts coming loose. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for here. I don't ever use my seatbelt. I don't know why, I just never do. I'm, I'm on and off the tractor a lot, so I can't really comment on the seatbelt other than it's just been in that position until now, until I moved it for uh, several couple years now, so. Okay, everything on this part of the tractor has been good. Um, I have had to replace um, a couple of these uh, female and male connectors. I can't remember which ones now, but um, I do need to replace uh, those those dust caps. I have a set of those. So I'll put those on. I also need to tape this back up. Uh, this is the controls that go to the diverter up here. But um, anyway, I think I added that for protection because it was kind of touching this area. So I should probably add some more tape or add some more protection there. But um, at any rate, that's been good. Um, I've had the parking brake lever. That's kind of what this is. You can see it back here. It's that little silver thing kind of sticking out there. That actually broke on me. Um, I use the parking brake all the time. It seems like every time I get off the tractor, I'm setting the parking brake. And uh, obviously when I'm parking on the trailer, I set it too. So anyway, that broke. I replaced that. That was, uh, I don't know, kind of an easy fix. I thought I it would be easier to take the floorboard off, so that's what I did. And uh, that made it a little bit easier to access. So that maybe is a little bit longer way of doing it, but I thought it was easier in the end. But otherwise, fairly easy fix. All right, let's pop the hood here. Um, I always use my key. I have lost this once. Not, I mean, not like forever. I just lost it for like an hour, and I spent... A long time at least like 30 minutes looking for this key after I took it out to use it to pop the hood so regarding that key I heard that John Deere has now come up with a fix for that so that it's just like a button or something now but what I do is I pop the hood and I put this in my pocket my jacket pocket or something and then what I happened to me is I switch jackets and I looked all over the place not realizing that I put a different jacket on and it was actually in my other jacket pocket so don't do that. I'm glad they came out with a new design because I don't like using the key. Because there's only, I only have one, however they are universal. You can literally just go to the dealership and buy a new key. And you don't have to get it cut or anything. They're all just universal keys, so it's kind of a goofy feature. But anyway, a lot of equipment is like that. Um, I love my dealership because they take really good care of me. And if anyone from John Deere is watching and they want to get mad at them for taking care of a customer, um, please don't because I really like that. So these air filters, the old style, um, would actually crack the valve cover and then you'd have oil leaking everywhere and people have run their engines out of oil and there's been, you know, larger, larger problems. And um, what they did for me is my warranty was coming up. They called me and they said, hey, your warranty is going to be coming up here soon. Bring your tractor in if you want any, anything done to it. So I brought it in and I said, hey, I never had that fixed yet. And they said, well, between you, me, and the fence post, you know, we'll say that it broke, and um, we'll just we'll just fix it for you. And I'm glad they did because it, it just took good care of me. I was I was it was probably going to happen eventually, and um, yeah, they just they just fixed it for me, and I've had no no troubles. So that goes to good customer service on their end. And I I'm not saying every dealership will do that for you, but I don't know. They're just really good to me. So um, that's what they did. And I'm thankful because I didn't have a more catastrophic problem while I'm out in the field and, I, and then the tractor's just sitting there and that could have been way worse. So uh, they did a really good job. Otherwise, everything else has been good. I do need to clean out this bay. I have a lot of dirt and debris stuck down there. I should really try to scoop a lot of that out. Um, this thing has overheated on me a, a couple of times um, and that's just due to the screen being full of debris. So you just get out and clean that off and everything's good again. It cools down real fast. But 
otherwise that's pretty much it this thing has been uh really good to me 360 hours hard uh, i've had a lot of really cool projects with this thing um, i'm really surprised at the amount of work that it's been able to do i would get another one in a heartbeat i wouldn't i wouldn't hesitate at all these are really awesome machines likewise so are other subcompact tractors um, not just john deere or, or any of the major brands but regardless of what tractor you have um, i'm sure that you are more than happy with it and uh, pretty impressed at its capabilities so um, likewise so am i and this is a really good decision a really good investment i use it here at home i mow my lawn with it and then i also use it on the side and it makes some extra dollars with it too and uh even more than that more importantly i just have fun with it i like to be outside if you're not if you're not dirty you're not rich and so when you're outside and you're just having fun and you're moving moving dirt and you're solving problems for people uh it's really rewarding and this is the main equipment and the main tool i use to do that so thanks to thanks to those that make subcompact tractors how fun and what a cool uh, piece of equipment what a cool toy whatever you want to call it um i would encourage you to get one if you ever ever thought about it so they can be expensive though i mean there's a payment i make a payment on mine and then plus you get all the implements with it so you know right now i'm probably thirty thousand bucks in um i don't have a backhoe or anything but um i do have a bunch of other things so um but yeah all together it's probably about thirty thousand dollar investment but you can have a lot of fun with it and you can make some money on the side and um, it can pay for itself, but you also have to be the one to do the work. So it's kind of a give and take. The door swings both ways, but it is very rewarding. All right. Well, hey, I hope it, that was helpful. That was just a quick review um, of some of the things that have gone wrong or broke. All very minor. Again, at 360 hours, same thing at 200. Most of those issues are very minor. So, um, hey, also another shameless plug. I did start another business. It's called Bizman Signs. I make uh, customized metal signs. So if you have one for your business, um, let me know. Uh, go to www.bizmansigns, B-I-S-M-A-N-S-I-G-N-S, bizmansigns.com. And uh, there's a link or there's a button on there that you can request a custom sign so you can upload an image of maybe your logo or whatever it is and i will uh, cut that and finish it and it can be um, either painted or if you need it powder coated um, that is an option as well just let me know what you would like most signs um, are in that price range from 100 to 200 dollars depending on um, what size you get and what type of a finish you want so um, don't hesitate to ask just send me an email um, at dash at bizmansigns.com or um, you can actually just send us an inquiry uh, or a message through the through the website as well so but hey hope you like this video um, please subscribe and like uh, I got more stuff coming up here this spring and summer looking forward to all those projects and uh, for those of you that are new to the channel um, I'm just a one-man wrecking crew I do all this just by myself um, relatively young and I just have fun doing this kind of stuff on the side so um, I work at a hospital full time and I just kind of do this after hours and on weekends and I have a load of fun doing it. So um, love your support and hey, if you want to subscribe, uh, please do so. That helps out the channel and um, hope you're enjoying the content so far. So hey, thanks guys and uh, stay safe out there and we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks. This is Carol Baskin and her tiger. You got its ear, Carol. Carol Baskin.